Fender P bass, that means precision bass. It's a player series, that means made in Mexico. So I'm gonna throw it on the bench and I'm gonna do a review just for you. Yeah, that's you. So welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where guitar reviews happen for a reason. I don't tell you what the reason is. Well, because whenever I post a review, I get a lot of views and new subscribers. So I'm not going to talk a lot in this uh, intro. Let's go over to the shop and put the P bass on the bench and do a review. Oh, I'm sorry. Guitar Quackery. Oh yeah, I, I did almost forget. Thanks for reminding me. Thanks, bye. Uh, the viewer pointed out that I forgot to share uh, an old Chinese proverb of the day this time. Uh, so, how about this one? At the Fender Guitar Factory, quality is consistently inconsistent. All right, it's a Fender P bass, almost new. The action is too high, or was. I uh, adjusted the truss rod a little bit already, just to see how it responds. We're gonna do a full review of this bass. Uh, let's have a look at it first. So, show you here with my camera, what we see, first impression. Come on, focus. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it is a Fender P bass. Uh, we see a little bit of a fret sprout. Okay, that's what it looks like from here. The bridge. All right, nothing much to see. Uh, I will turn it around so that we can look at the wood grain of the neck. That's always important. And this is what we see here. So, as you can see, the growth rings are wrapping around this side. Okay, and here we only see the lines. So, this means if we go here, we can see if there's enough light. Yeah, that they're slanted, okay, at an angle. So, Sometimes that means that the neck might twist or do something that we don't want it to do as it ages, as the wood ages. So it is my understanding that it's about four months old. We don't know how long it's been sitting at the warehouse before it was sold, but four months ago, the Customer bought it, brought it in for a setup. Uh, one thing I'm going to point out right away is this gap right here. We have a big gap uh, on this side of the neck pocket. I did not remove the pick guard, so I don't really know what it looks like on the other side. So it's not really a very tight neck pocket. Uh, yeah, it's a P bass. It has some issues on the fretboard. Major neck sprout. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you uh, through the microscope the sides of the frets. Okay, so let me zoom in. Okay, we see right here, uh, what we see here is that uh, it has, uh, so this is uh, the finish that was spread over, right? But you can see that um, the fret is protruding a little bit, okay? They also spray the finish like this. Okay. Let's move over to this fret over here. We see the same exact situation. Okay, I just peeled it off. We're gonna do some uh, 
dressing of the frets. So we're going to have to remove all this anyway. Okay. That's what it is. All right. Like I said, I adjusted the truss rod already because it had a, a huge up bow and I wanted to see how it would respond. So now I'm going to take the straight edge and I'm going to show you what we see. We're going to need this camera here. And I already know my measurements, so uh, I'm going to break the suspense. I'm going to tell you right away that the uh, relief is not symmetrical. I measure 11 one thousandths of relief on the treble side and about 22 one thousandths on the bass side. And now I'll show you how I measured it. These are feeler gauges. Um, here we have the 11 one thousandths feeler gauge. The next one is 12 one thousandths, okay? And 22 one thousandths is all the way here. So now let me show you. We're going to take the 11 one thousandths feeler gauge. We're going to take the straight edge, place it on top. Okay, and we take the 11 one thousandths feeler gauge and we can see that it goes through here on the 8th fret. Okay. Now, if I move over to 12 one thousandths, it, it gets stuck, right? So, the 12 one thousandths gets stuck. That's this one. 11 one thousandths passes through. Okay. Once again, that's 11 one thousandths. Can you see this? I think you can. Okay. Now let me transfer this straight edge to this side. And I'm going to skip to this feeler gauge that's uh, all the way at the end, 22 one thousandths. And you can see that it does go through it's tight but it still does go through okay so we have just established that we have an asymmetrical fretboard now i'll show you why i'm going to position the camera right here so that we look down uh down the neck right the neck has a little bit of a twist. This is a, just a, a stirring stick from a, a coffee shop. And here I'm going to place it right under the strings. Maybe lower the camera a little bit. Maybe even zoom in a little bit. Okay, let me adjust the camera first. Move it over like that. So this is uh, hard to show on the camera, but uh, you will get the idea. Uh, you can see the stirring stick there is not perfectly aligning with the body of the instrument right so it's a little bit lower on this side if we focus here on the body we can see that uh, the stirring stick did not completely align right to the body it's slightly twisted counterclockwise we can see a little gap here but here it's dipping down a little bit. Not much, but 
we do have a little bit of a neck twist and we have an asymmetrical fretboard and I believe it's because of the wood grain direction. Now we're gonna look at the nut. So I'll show you from this side. I use, um, well this time I'm, I'm going to just use feeler gauges to show you this, okay? So usually I go high tech and now this time I'm gonna go low tech. Let me undo it this way. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the nut here. Focus. This is a, a set of feeler gauges and this feeler gauge here is two one hundredths of a millimeter. It's really, really thin. Okay, very thin. Onion skin thickness. If I push the string against the second fret, there is no gap left here. Okay? No gap. If I push the A string against the second fret, no gap. Uh, but uh, the D string does have a gap and the uh, G string also does have a gap, okay? But these two strings are very, very low. The question is, are they too low or are they just good? So it's not buzzing. So as it is, one could argue that it's perfect. Um, but we need to take into account the uh, wear and tear, okay? So let me show you this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. We are looking at the E string. You see there's a little play here at the front end if I lift the string, you can see that it's pushing at the back end, but not at the front too much, okay? And that's why we have a little play here. Uh, also, when we tune the string, you see, the string will be wearing down the nut, okay? If we look at the A string, this is what we see. Again, when we tune the string, it's gonna be wearing down the nut. But here we can see that the pressure is all focused on the front end. We, we see a witness point at the front, but nothing at the back end. So the A strings, uh, string slot is actually better than the E in this case. Let's look at the D. It's pretty tight at the front. Uh, let's me just remove the string. This is what we see. I'm not really sure what I'm seeing. It looks like it looks like a, I don't know, like it's a little flat at the bottom, maybe. And let's have a look at this string over here. Uh, yeah, I guess it's not bad. I would hit the back end a little bit with a file uh, so that uh, the pressure is more focused all the way at the front. That's what I would do. In fact, uh, going to be doing some work on this base. Okay, so we talked about the neck twist, the neck pocket gap, the fret ends we saw. There's one last thing I want to show you. On the back of the neck here, we're going to have a look at this skunk stripe. I can see a little bit of a chipping, okay? And now I want to bring the microscope and focus on this. 
just like that. We can see here that um, there's probably a little bit of a separation of the internal glue joint that's uh, around the second fret and the third fret at the back of the neck. Okay, so you can clearly see this. A little bit of the finish chipped off. I didn't try to insert a feeler gauge there. But, uh, yeah, I don't really see a gap. I don't know what this is coming off right now. But I, I, uh, I would not be able to insert a feeler gauge because the finish is still uh, capping uh, the glue joint. Electronically, it works. Let's plug it in and play. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it plays. And that's it. So what I'll do is I'll do a, a full service on this, fret and dressing. Um, I'm not gonna touch the nut or I actually will, the G string and the D, um, full setup on it. Nothing I can do about the neck pocket, nothing on budget. And I don't know, I might, I might drop fill the uh, skunk stripe a little bit, you know, just to as a service to the customer. And that's about it. And now comes my favorite part of the show. That's the part where everybody starts clicking the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Don't forget the share button, you know, spread the word. Thank you very much. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I removed the pick guard so that we can look inside. Uh, let's have a closer look. Uh, so this is the uh, gap we can see. It's okay here. It's okay here. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be better, but it's okay. Uh, got pickups it's a little bit of spaghetti situation here I wouldn't say that this is uh, the best wiring job I've seen uh, but it is what it is so now you see it on the inside obviously I cleaned it up I already did some fret work and now I'm continuing I'm having some tea. Mm. Yeah, I ran out of coffee. Uh, speaking of coffee, uh, did you know there's a, a link below that says buy me a coffee? So if you feel like you want to buy me a coffee, you know, to keep me up at night editing videos, uh, you know, just click on that link and thank you very much. Uh, you can support this channel in other ways too. You can, you know, tell your friends about it. Just click the share button. Uh, what else? Uh, well, I don't know what else to tell you. It's late. I'm tired. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.